Hello, all you beautiful people. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and I want to talk to you today about video game advertising, or more specifically, how some adverts have been built into your games in absolutely baffling ways. Now, me, I love a good advert. Hell, it's why I shield these dead memes on a t-shirt every chance I can. Also, just a side note, because it actually acts as a little tip jar for me for all the hard work I do across four channels. I swear to Christ, if I wasn't already bold, I would have lost my hair from stress. Can you imagine what it's like trying to herd these mutton heads around? that I call my colleagues. Anyway, adverts. You can't bloody move for them in this day and age, and yes, they're in our video games. And let me tell you, Carl and Sarah, that they have not been subtle about it. So let's look at some of these awful ads and piss-poor partnerships together, shall we, kids? Yes, we shall. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 ridiculous ways adverts were built into your video games. And before we begin, just uh, be sure to stay tuned at the end, as there's going to be a special ad from me to you, which I hope you'll enjoy. Number 10, the Nissan charging station in SimCity. The launch of 2013 SimCity was a full-on disaster, with widespread reports of network outages, crashes and losses creating poorer coverage than my hairline of this game. But the bad press didn't stop there, as the online city builder soon came under fire for its inclusion of a Nissan-branded car charging station. It was a blatant cash-in for the publisher, as while the product itself is actually a principle of a great thing, I mean electric cars, good for the environment and all that, the in-game delivery was a little heavy-handed. The station didn't produce any waste of any kind, provided a happiness boost to all nearby businesses, and most bafflingly of all, didn't even require power to function, so yeah, it was kind of the perfect building choice. flawless in every way, a power station that didn't actually require power to run. That, my friends, is some future dupe. Oh, but it also stood out like a sore thumb and was just really, really blatant. Yeah, fun. Number nine, Burnout Paradise's Obama billboards. Burnout Paradise is brilliant. The adverts that littered the glorious playground? Not so much, and they were bloody everywhere and utterly relentless. The likes of Gillette, Burger King, and Vizio, or Vizio, I don't, I've never even bloody heard of that, all cropped up again and again, but its weirdest inclusion was definitely a series of huge Barack Obama billboards which popped up to promote the then-presidential candidate's White House campaign. Starting on the 6th of October 2008 and running until the 3rd of November of the same year, the Xbox 360 version of the game played host to several of these Democratic Party billboards urging the player to vote. The ads were paid for by the Obama campaign and only appeared in 10 US states, including Iowa and Ohio, which traditionally went to the opposing Republican Party. Look at that, bit of education for you there. Weirdly though, EA put out a statement saying that although they chose to take the money and put the billboards in the game, they weren't officially supporting Obama in his campaign. Actually, is that surprising that EA would do anything for money? Probably not. Number 8. Final Fantasy XV's Love of Cup Noodles Okay, so I'm balls deep with this one, as I too love a cup noodle. It's noodles in a cup, a hug in a mug, or as Mark from Peep Show would put it, a wank in a tube. Satisfying and cheap, just how I like them. However, Final Fantasy XV was absolutely obsessed with Nissin Cup Noodles. Not only did the game include an entire quest centred around the product itself, in which you had to gather ingredients to make the perfect cup, but characters will actively endorse the snack on multiple occasions talking about how much they love them. Billboards, trucks, and most hilariously of all, a giant branded hat could all be seen in the game. And while it was played for laughs for the most part, with the voice actors truly hamming it up in places, it was still pretty shameless. Again, just how I love them. Number 7. Pepsi Man and the Giant Pepsi Can Unlike the previous examples on this list, Pepsi Man is a whole game built around an advertisement of a product rather than a product being slotted into an unrelated game. Kind of like Cool Spot or any of the McDonald's games, but, but this, trust me, is more insane than any of them. Released in 1999 for the PlayStation 1, Pepsi Man was essentially an endless runner in which your character, Pepsi Man, the soft drink manufacturer's primary mascot at the time, dodged obstacles and just had silly fun in the process. However, it is a gauntlet of advertising, and what do you think is being shoved into our eyes and throats? Well, it's not going to be Uncle Stan's thigh-rubbing ointment for good Boy Scouts, that's for damn sure, of course. It's Pepsi. On certain occasions, Pepsi Man would be chased down the street by an enormous can of Pepsi. In between stages, random video clips of a man drinking Pepsi were inserted because why not? Stages were covered in Pepsi-branded billboards telling you how delicious the drink was. And of course, there was that ever-annoying Pepsi Man theme song playing over the top of the action. And by annoying, I mean it took me three years to forget about it, only for it to come rushing back the moment I started working on this list. 
brilliant. Number 6. Street Fighter V's Ad Emblazoned Characters This is the most recent and pretty bloody blatant example of advertising done without a care in the world, because in early December 2018, Capcom announced that sponsored content would soon arrive on Street Fighter V Arcade Edition to remind players about costumes, bundles and the Capcom Pro Tour. When enabled, characters in the game would have ads seared onto their skin, gloves and clothes with additional ads appearing in loading screens in certain and stages. Now, this can be turned on and off, but the problem is, is that the characters are absolutely splattered with logos. It's like Capcom were looking at every inch of exposed flesh and sought to get it covered with a logo. Plus, some of them look bloody horrible, and it goes without saying that the fan reaction to such a move was, well, less than positive. They've since been removed. Well, the ads, that is, not the fans, although I'm sure that a few people were put off, and there's no word on whether they'll be coming back. Again, the ads. Not the fans, although the fans might actually stay clear due to this. Well done, Capcom. Number 5. Stalking people and handing out burgers in Sneak King Oh, this is… this is weird. When I hear that there's a game involving dressing up in finery, sneaking around and palming off my meat to gormless fools, then I just think I'm returning to the role that I had as the crown prince of cum in the porno that me and your mum shot. I think it was called My Kingdom for a Horse or something like that. Not this Sneak King game, that's for damn sure. Also, there's my one per list. Available exclusively at Burger King restaurants, Sneak King was one of three Burger King-themed games released in 2006 and was only playable on Xbox consoles. Its gameplay was actually kind of simple. The King would sneak around a given area and feed people burgers. Why did he have to sneak? Well, because if NPCs spotted him, they'd lose their appetite. Okay, there seems to have been a bit of a dropped message with this. If your mascot is so goddamn ugly it makes stomachs turn, then why, oh why, is he a mascot for a fast food chain? The game sold incredibly well, and Burger King wasn't coy about the fact that it was made to boost in restaurant sales either, but despite their openness, Sneak King was pretty rubbish. I mean, yeah, of course, it was an advert, not meant to be a great game, but come on. Number 4. Mario Kart and Mercedes-Benz At this stage of existence, basically everyone on Earth has heard of or experienced Mario Kart in some way. It's a fun, light-hearted game series with not a single hint of realism in sight, full of crazy items like flying blue shells and gigantic sentient bullets. So as you'd expect, the sight of a Mercedes-Benz vehicle racing down Rainbow Road felt extremely out of place. Back in 2014, Nintendo announced that Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U would receive a trio of Mercedes-Benz cars in a free update. The Mercedes-Benz GLA, the W25 Silver Arrow, and the 300SL Roadster. Oh, right. The game publisher also threw on a Mercedes Cup in honor of this partnership wherein players could race against each other using these new cars. The three carts didn't affect gameplay in any way, with just it being a Mercedes branded thing that was just a cosmetic addition, but the look of the vehicles themselves just didn't gel with Mario Kart 8's cartoony aesthetic, and each time that you saw one of these mobile adverts in the game, it pulled you out of the fun and vibrant world and put into something a little seedier, that even Mario could not escape the allure of some sweet, sweet wallet lettuce. Number 3. Wearing a Pizza Hut Box in Fantasy Star Portable 2 Another food-themed advertising tie-in, 2009's PSP exclusive Fantasy Star Portable 2 undoubtedly made many of its players very, very hungry by including some rather odd Pizza Hut items scattered throughout the game. If you've ever wanted to wield a pizza pan and a pizza box as a weapon and shield, you are in luck here. You could even go to a virtual Pizza Hut restaurant and order food to restore your health. But not content with just this much selling out, Sega also opted to include figurines of Japanese Pizza Hut mascot, Cheese-kun, <laughs> which players could dress up as in-game room de decorator. I don't know why, Cheese-kun has just absolutely bodied me. <laughs> Cheese-kun. Anyway, yeah, you could get it for in-game in decorations. In fact, it's the absurdity of this that I kind of love about it. I adore that there is this- you could have a party member using pizza-based weapons, you know? To be honest, you've probably actually already seen that if you go to the local Chippy Pass Midnight here in Newcastle anyway. Number 2. Biker Mice from Mars Really Wants You To Eat Snickers if there's one thing that you can say about Biker Mice from Mars, it's that it does exactly what it says in the box. I mean, you play as mice who ride bikes and are from Mars. So far, so good. But what they didn't put on the box was the fact that you would be subjected, subjected to Snickers advertisements at every conceivable opportunity. Gigantic Snickers logos were strewn across racetracks, characters held Snickers bars in strong, heroic poses while telling players that even winners need something to satisfy their hunger. I have no idea why these mice from Mars on bikes were so taken with Snickers, but boy howdy, 
It just... <laughs> if it gave me those bodies, no cybernetic upgrades, sign me the hell up. Also, side note, why not Milky Way or Galaxy? Why, why Snickers? For, for God's sake, they're aliens from outer space. You could have played on that. My God, Mars, it's right there for you. Jesus. And number one, Darken Sky's entire magic system is based on Skittles. My mind is absolutely baffled reading that entry title. An entire magic system based around Skittles. Skittles. Magic. Okay, whatever. Dark and Sky has you playing as Sky, a young woman searching for her lost mother. As you advance, you'll encounter an assortment of fantasy enemies, and you can take them down with the power of Skittles! Sky can perform magic using these multicolored sweeties, and there's even a whole menu dedicated to managing and customizing her powers. The worst thing about all of this, though, is that the game makes absolutely no mention of this tie-in whatsoever. All you get is a Skittles trademark in the bottom left hand of the back cover, rendered in the smallest possible print. It truly boggles the brain, but at least the game was so average that this egregious advertising slipped under the radar for many. Anyway, that's the end of our list. Thank you so much for watching. But before you go, I promised you a special advert, and here it is. Look, my son, look at the marvel that I have created. Uh, comics. They called me a fool for trying to put a dead meme onto a t-shirt. A damn bold fool. A damn bold fool with an ass that won't quit. It got quite personal towards the, the end there. But look who's laughing now. Quiet. <laughs> 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 Quiet, my son, my ugly son, for my other creation rises. Look at the quality fabric, hand-stitched by blind orphans. The perfect letter spacing calculated so meticulously that Rich Hudson had an erection for months about it. And a colouring so deep that I had to buy the dye off the dark web. Oh, for God's sake, Josh! Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Marvel. Oh no, the beast has grown angry, angered by our drab fashion choices. I am such a fool to think that it wouldn't try to infect us with its perfect, perfect design. Quick, we must do something to appease the beast. Why don't we buy one from shop.worldculture.com? Oh. Look, it's already got Scott Nash. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. But where can I buy one? Are you kidding me? This is why I don't give you any extra lines. But also, at shop.whatculture.com! Quick, let's go and buy one right now! Let's go buy one right now! Right now? Oh, don't you try hard now. You've already lost your bit. Oscar's in the f***ing bin. Ah, there we go. Doesn't that look better? I feel so virile and alive. And it's also fixed your hump. That's actually pretty good. Now do yourself a favor and act like your mum and spread the love, aka her legs, and buy yourself one of these glorious dead memes on a t-shirt, courtesy of this handsome chap right here. You're very, very welcome. Cut! Jesus Christ, mine is oh, so it's itchy. It's all wet. Ah. What? Ah. It stinks. I pick on yours. Ah. The worst font ever. I want to die. Oh.